the issue. Unfortunately, one of our classic uh, American icons uh, of comic books, Captain America, um, <laughs> has run into some controversy. Uh, in issue 602, it's called Two Americas Part One, the title hero and the Falcon, who is a black superhero from New York City, stumble upon a protest rally in Boise, Idaho, and they see a whole bunch of these protesters carrying signs. And what do the signs say? Stop the socialists, teabag the libs before they teabag you. Captain America then sees the protesters and says this must be an anti-tax thing, and then the Falcon replies that he would not be welcomed into a crowd of angry white folks. Nice, huh? Ed Brubaker, who wrote the story, told FoxNews.com he did not write that particular line of teabag the libs before they teabag you. He says that the words were added by someone in lettering or production. This is what he claims before it was shipped to the printer. Uh, they are going to change it in subsequent editions. So they sent out the, the first batch um, that has this uh, to teabag the libs before they teabag you, but uh, they did take it out for the second wave uh, of publishing. Um, he's insisting that he does not have a political agenda. Um, he said that he didn't think that personally anything that was in there would offend anyone. Um, the sign being changed to something more generic for the trade reprint, he said, I don't have a problem with. Um, but at this point, the, the change may come too late because people have already seen it. Um, Brubaker is, is known to, to take political jabs. He's known to come from the left. Um, basically, he's, he's said things like um, Sarah Palin is an idiot. Um, Michelle Bachman and President George W. Bush, uh, memo to the rest of the tea crowd. We had a revolution already. It's called an election. He, he posted on their uh, Twitter accounts. Uh, he also tweeted, um, again, that he did not intend to imply that the group of protesters in the comic book were tea parties. I think he doth protest too much. Uh, he says, I was simply using them to show the mood of the country in various places outside Captain America and the Falcon's usual home of New York City. So basically he's jabbing uh, the Midwest and the more rural areas of the country. A spokeswoman for Marvel Comics did not respond to repeated requests for comment from Fox News. Herb London, president of the Hudson Institute, a think tank based in Washington, according to Fox News, says that the protest scene in the comic book is merely the latest attempt and a systematic effort to chastise the grassroots Tea Party movement. I was perplexed by this. It seems to me that there was a clear effort on someone's part to undermine the Tea Party movement. This involves sensitivities. There's no reason for something like that to be included. Also in some more uh, cultural news, I mentioned um, this, this uh, Super Bowl ad uh, that was supposed to appear uh, during the Super Bowl uh, for the uh, video game Dante's Inferno and how uh, they had to change the tagline at the end from go to hell to um, hell awaits. Well, the, the, the commercial is, is kind of kind of creepy, but uh, someone here at WLEA uh, shared with me a little bit more about the game Dante's Inferno, and frankly, I'm surprised CBS would air it, whether or not they have the Hell Awaits thing or not. Basically, uh, you, you dive in and you slay demons and dark lords, uh, to save a girl from Satan's grasp, uh, there's a level where players can take on what they call knife-wielding, unbaptized babies. If you kill enough of the unbaptized babies, you unlock an achievement called the Bad Nanny Award. Um, this 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 release of the new Dante's Inferno was was you know very much anticipated. Uh, the maker is called Electronic Arts. It's one of several games uh, to make a list of eight titles related to the devil compiled by a guy named Lance Christian, <laughs> ironic, of Elton, Illinois. Um, Susan Brinkman of the Catholic group Living His Life Abundantly in a blog uh, posted a, a whole list of games, Gaming for Satan. She says this has been going on for the last 10 years, but they have gotten more, um, more violent and more sinister in the just in the past few years. Um, Dante's Inferno came in at number 7 uh, on Christian's list, uh, but it was the only one to get the multi-million deer exposure uh, of advertising in the Super Bowl. So it, it's not, it wasn't a high-selling game, but for whatever reason, um, they, that was the one they wanted to air during the Super Bowl. Some of the other uh, games from Electronic Arts um, include, let's see, we have um, Shadow Hearts, where a hero uses his power to intercept and destroy God and save the world. Assassin's Creed, where the main character is a Muslim, uh, assassin assigned to kill Christians. So the player, the kid playing the game is the Muslim killing the Christians. Dragon's Age Origins, 
which revolves around the story of God going mad and cursing the world. And also in that game, a witch attacks believers and players can have sex with her in a pagan act called blood magic so she can give birth to a god. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, another one is, is from um, Guitar Hero, where players use uh, guitars who, that are decorated with pentagrams. This site also lists that as, as something parents should watch out for. And God is mocked by the devil, and in the end the devil is the hero of the game. Women dressed as Catholic schoolgirls are degraded also in that game. You know, I, I don't do video games in my house. It was just a decision I made very early on. We've got the TV. We've got the computer. they got enough stuff going into their head. My mother-in-law did get us a Wii, which we enjoy very much, but I have to say I'm, I'm really, the, the more I see, I'm really, really glad we don't do video games in my house. Also about the uh, the Super Bowl, I talked about that commercial with Tim Tebow where all the feminists were up in a Oh, just having a little tizzy about the whole thing and uh, urging people not to watch the show. And they came out with uh, their own little videos. Planned Parenthood came out with their own little videos um, mocking this commercial. Um, but you know what? It really was uh, a success. Focus on the Family is reporting that the uh, website link that they showed at the end of the commercial um, received 40 times the number of hits that they usually get. Uh, they figure 100 million viewers were indeed watching the Super Bowl, so they, they hit all those people. Um, the, the ad itself cost about $3 million, but they figured, uh, focus on the family, that they actually got $10 million in free publicity because everybody was talking about it. Did you see that commercial, Brian O'Neill? You know, it wasn't even, if you didn't know what the controversy was about, you know, if you had no idea and you watched that commercial, you just kind of think, oh, well, that's cute. I wonder what that's about. There was nothing, you know, flagrantly pro-life or fragrantly pro-choice. It was just this nice little commercial, hey, go read her story. And I just thought it was so funny that they were in such an uproar over nothing, basically. And, and, and focused on the family got what they wanted. They got $10 million of free publicity because everybody uh, was talking about it. Uh, now President Terry O'Neill is now saying that the, the, uh, the commercial uh, approves of violence against women because he came out and tackled his women. So now that's the one she's jumping on is that she doesn't care about the anti-abortion message. She's concerned that it promoted domestic violence. You've been listening to the Amy McManus Show on AM 1480 WLEA. Coming up next, Brian O'Neill with Connections. He's going to talk to Bill Nojay. AM 1480.